allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next on our agenda are the consideration of the minutes of a July 22nd, 2024 regular village board meeting. Um, is there a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Are there any comments, any changes, any additions? I did not see any. Uh, it is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Next would be our non-agenda items and visitors. The village president and board of trustees allocates 15 minutes during this item for those individuals who would like the opportunity to address the village board of trustees on any matter not listed on the agenda. Each person addressing the village board of trustees is asked to uh, limit their comments to a maximum of five minutes. I do not see anybody in the room uh, willing to make a comment. Do we have anybody online? There are three people participating online. I believe um, none of them have anything um, until later in the agenda. But if, if somebody is participating via Zoom, please raise your hand. You can be recognized at this time. Ready to go. Moving forward uh, to item number five, the village board sets the order of a meeting. Um, the village president and board of trustees will entertain a request for anyone present on the order of business to be connected. As I do not see anybody in this meeting, I say we follow the regular uh, order. Next on our agenda is item number six, the village finance um, report. Uh, for and that would be the warrant reports for July 23rd to August 26, 2024, and for fiscal year 2025 payroll expenditures to date. Is there a motion to approve the warrants report? Motion so, to second. Motion to approve. Thank you. Um, it is, uh, and so as a summary of background and reason for request, we have expenditure of village funds for payments of invoices in the amount of uh, $389,750.55. For July 23rd to August 12th, 2024, we have expenditure of village funds for payment of invoices in the amount of $428,000. $26.38 for August 13 to August 26, 2024. And finally, we have expenditure of village funds for payment of payroll in the amount of $344,374 for July 2024. Are there comments on the board regarding these warrants? Any comments? Any, anybody noticing anybody on the ledger? I read the ledger. <laughs> it's fun. I do not see any comment. It is a roll call vote. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Freed. Aye. Trustee Hatch. Aye. Trustee Rappin. Aye. Trustee Ryder. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you so much. And that will be followed by item 6B, our July 2024 finance, finance report. You want to take this one? Sure, just really quickly. Um, trends are generally going in the right direction. Monthly sales tax revenue on a cash basis compared to last uh, this July of um, last year is up 6.8%. So that's good news. Um, revenues are up from prior year this time, and expenditures are on par. So, cool. Happy to answer any other specific questions if there are any. Any questions? It is a voice vote. Um, on need a motion a second. Need a so. I still need a motion. So could I please have a um, motion to approve? Motion to accept the finance second. report. Motion, a motion to accept the finance report. So that would be Steve. That's what I heard Trustee and, Rappin say. And then <laughs> second. Kat seconding. Thank you. Could I please, this is a voice vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Next would be on our agenda is our village administrator's report. So um, I have one item that's not listed. Um, it's a report from last Wednesday night's, um, last Wednesday night's Plan Commission Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'll do a brief presentation on that. But first, um, we received several um, requests uh, to waive solicitation um, permit fees from a number of 
local non for profits. Um, later in the agenda is uh, a code change to more closely align with some other policy changes the village has made with regards to waiving fees for non for profits and charitable organizations. So, um, but before that, we've received a handful. And so, um, by code, the board has to approve those and waive those fees, mm -hmm. and it's $100. Um, so, um, happy to answer any questions, but it, it, it's growing native group solicitation that's actually, a, they're not even legally organized. It's a handful of volunteer residents. Um, Maxwell's Toy Box, a non for profit uh, local Girl Scout troop, um, and um, Lake Bluff Alliance and Excellence. So, another foundation, local foundation, non for profit. So, happy to answer any questions if there are any. No, I did look at the four groups this morning, looked at their, um, I mean, I know, of course, local the Girl Scout and local and uh, the Alliance and Excellence that are amazing organizations. Alliance and Excellence basically every year chooses a subject such as two years, three years ago was microscopes for the school. It's an amazing organization. The same with uh, Girl Scout, of course. I mean, they are amazing. And the, the bar for Girl Scout in our community is amazing for what they have to achieve to reach um, uh, the gold award like my like my, do my daughter got that a few years ago and uh, I, I looked at maxwell that is awesome to bring in uh, toys to kids um as, i mean at uh, in pediatric hospitals and i did not know the growing native garden group but that sounds right yeah so if there's simple direction to me to do so i can take care of that support it i yes. would as well Please. Do we need a vote or do we need yeah, a motion? Yeah, just a simple one motion to cover all of them. Could I please have a motion to support? I have support? a motion to carry all of them. <laughs> Could I have a second? Second. It's a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Awesome. The motion carries, thank you. And bear with me one second, let me quick read. So uh, on Wednesday night, there were two petitions in front of the PCZBA. One had to do with the Park District seeking to have pickleball uh, approved. And when they originally submitted, it was um, their plan to have facilities or seek facilities at both at Blair and Artesian. They have subsequently amended their uh, application and um, have now Screen is very busy. Pardon me. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is the location um, just south of the public safety building where there are five tennis courts. The park district presented a plan to have four pickleball courts permanently installed on the west side, which would require about a 30 foot addition to the existing tennis court facilities and would leave them with four tennis courts um, there and uh, they would abandon pickleball entirely at Blair. Um, we work with a noise uh, expert who demonstrated that this new plan, which would involve a uh, noise attenuation curtain, if you will, fabric that would be placed between the tennis courts and the permanent pickleball facilities would provide more than adequate uh, attenuation to be within both the village uh, noise limits as well as the states um, and within the hours that the park district was seeking which is essentially 8 to 8 um, Monday through Saturday and Sundays uh, they were asking for 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. so slightly limited in those but the noise attenuation would be more than adequate to be w below the ambient noise level that's experienced in the park um, other conditions of approval coming out of the PCCB was um, the village for years has had its directed its employees to park over at Artesian parking lot. They're saying during the peak summer um, season when baseball and tennis and all those sports are happening, if we can move direct those employees to park at the train station, that would benefit and free up parking because parking became really the biggest issue in the conversation is, is it's, it's limited parking there. 
and uh, just try to make the most of the uh, spaces that are available. Um, and there was also a comment made by um, Commissioner George Russell had noted that there were multiple vehicles, as many as 10 at the parking lot that appeared to have no connection with adults in the parking. So he was curious if there were people parking there and using uh, that as a, a stopover and using the train station. People used to do that years ago, but given the, the low cost, it seems unlikely, so we weren't sure. So we're gonna look into that at his request. Um, and then the uh, PCCB also wanted to make it clear that pickleball would not be played at Blair Park and that there would not be lighting at the Artesian Park facilities and um, that the Park District would do all that it could to communicate with the Youth Baseball Association to get their uh, users over to the middle school parking lot. So um, right now we are working with the Park District's attorney to draft uh, an ordinance um, with, and it'll be back in front of you guys, uh, that the next opportunity would be the first meeting in September. It may be a little bit later depending on the timing with their board, but that's the goal. Um, the other uh, item I share really quickly too is, uh, if you all know we're just south of Target, there is uh, Life Storage Lake Bluffs, a new storage facility there. They have made application to add a separate structure, which is essentially a long linear garage that they want to put in for luxury car storage. Um, these are, um, I think, commonly called uh, man caves in the marketplace where they have um, they will have couches and bars and everything in them. This is not what they're asking to do. This is purely storage, but the idea is to have a controlled climate and um, uh, places to store high-end vehicles. And um, they think there's a big market for that. And the PCCBA was comfortable with these plans and recommended approval of them. There's some more civil engineering for them to do. Um, what will likely happen is you'll see an ordinance at the next meeting approving for first reading that they'll hold on to while they finalize their engineering. There's some interesting easements that run underneath this property for utilities that go right underneath these, these proclaimed structures. So they've got some work to do um, to nail all that down between their engineers and their uh, attorneys. But uh, from a use perspective, the PCB was comfortable with that. So um, they'll go to the ABR next and then bring it to you all for first reading. That's my report. Oh, we have a question. Yes, sir. May I speak to the... Sure. Please, David. David Grapp, President 111 East Prospect, and I speak to you as a resident. Nothing to do with that. Okay. Um, I'm taking the opportunity to never miss such a, a time as this to present some thoughts of the neighborhood, of what you've just heard about the pickleball. Um, the <clears throat> PCBA hearing was uh, very, very well done, I thought, in great depth. There are a few things that I would like to add as you prepare to consider this in addition to uh, Drew's report that I think our community feels somewhat strongly about. First of all, <clears throat> there was a report by the villages own sound engineer dealing with uh, how the sound would be as the courts are added. Um, I think a key element was 250 feet. I think it would be very wonderful if the documents you're preparing include 250 feet from a residence for a pickleball court. This would have taken care of a lot of what happened at Blair Park. Um, secondly, I think it was very important, the conversation that occurred about village employees parking in that parking lot and at least two, sometimes three staff vehicles that are left in that parking lot uh, overnight. Not only uh, this certainly would go a long way for the uh, uh, parking that overflows down on uh, Prospect in the baseball, but it would have an effect other times. Certainly village employees uh, need a place to park, but perhaps not, that's not the best place for it. And yes, it was a good observation that I think some of us notice over there. There does seem to be use in that lot for either people downtown or on the train. You don't really know where they're going, and I don't know how you would deal with that. But it is something to be aware of. Because again, I think, speaking for our neighborhood, uh, the parking is the issue. Well, what we've said to the folks before and in the letter that we sent to you previously, we're not opposed to the pickleball. We just have some concerns as to what's 
um, going to be done to mitigate the sound and um, the parking in the area and so forth. So we hope that uh, you look at those in particular. And as you're doing all of this, I thought it was interesting also that part of the Park District's presentation to the PCBA was <clears throat> this was occurring in what they called a community park. Okay, they've shut this pickleball down in a community park and they have and clearly said, we're gonna move it to a neighborhood park. They consider Artesian a neighborhood park, which we do in our neighborhood also. Um, and it's a wonderful asset, but if it's coming into a neighborhood from the community park, I think we wanna be very careful with how we use it and what is the impact on the area, okay? Um, Ruff, if you wanna jump in, please do. Um, but thank you for letting me take the opportunity. You never wanna miss the opportunity to say something. Thank you very much. Thank you know what, David, I think you raise a fine point. Um, maybe it would be appropriate to, once we have established those courts, to remeasure the sound to make sure that we're not committing a, a mistake. What do you think, what do you guys think about that? I, I didn't hear you. What, can you say that one more time? Um, as we, let's say we install those four courts, we have, after a few months, we have this going on. It would be, I think, appropriate to again run a sound study in, at Sunrise Park, no, at uh, Artisan Park, to know if we are actually within bounds for the community that lives around that, uh, that uh, those courts. I, I would think, I mean, if there's gonna be a big capital investment there, we'd, we'd wanna be pretty certain ahead of time. Yes. <clears throat> that it is within the bounds of the, of the sound study. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, I, I, think, I think we could do that, and I think the, the sound study would, would probably it would show that it satisfies the noise. I mean, honestly, I think parking was the biggest issue, more so than the noise, based off the sound study. And correct me if I'm wrong, David, but the neighborhood was more concern, concerned with having adequate parking facilities for a, a, an increased use. Mm -hmm. well, I, think, I think we were witness to uh, neighbors, the eight neighbors along um, uh, Green Bay, who basically were uh, we know that the sound is 2,000 hertz. We know that it basically resonates to the same as an alert as what we can hear from a phone or anywhere else from those, the sound of these, these uh, plastic balls. Um, I think I, I really don't want to make a mistake for us to move forward with this if later on we notice that the community, even though you might be at more than 250 feet, is experiencing the same... Um, so I would, I would be more in favor of repeating that so to make sure that we're not making a mistake. Regis, I would only want to do that if there was a contingency plan of further sound attenuation that could be added. Okay. Right, if, yeah. if, we, if we have a hypothesis that it's going to be fine, I wonder if there's a plan B, which is if it's not fine, then at least there's some technology or sound barriers that we can create to solve the problem. Okay, I would be good with that. I'll talk to Steve Thunder. And yes, that's his name. Good. Um, our sound consultant about that. There, there was some talk at the at the public hearing about could there be or should there be an additional noise attenuation on um, the south to kind of put in those two corners. And and he was pretty um, strongly felt like it would be unnecessary. Oh, but um, again, I don't think the noise was the issue as much as adequate parking. Right. And the conversation at the meeting was. Was it worth adding, removing, uh, or trying to install stalls on the north side of the parking lot, picking up the sidewalks, moving the path? And ultimately, the, the, the um, idea was that the park district's access to the middle school parking lots actually give them more than adequate parking under the village's Rio code requirements. And at the time, um, during the hearing, um, the executive director of the park district had a verbal verbal commitment from the superintendent of the school. Um, they do kind of work in symbiosis there in that the uh, school uses the parks for their uh, PE programs and their after school programs, sports events, but, um, and so it's, they've always had that relationship. So it's kind of papering that up was the conversation. But um, I think there was great comfort from those in, in the meeting and those in, uh, sitting around at the PCZBA um, that were, this is how it's always worked and they didn't see any reason why that would stop for it, you know, based off this additional use. So anyway, um, all that came up in the hearing, but nonetheless, I will 
take that up with uh, Steve Thunder about the idea of that is there a contingency plan so that I can probably even report back to you before this even comes in front of you about that issue. So thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Any more comments on the board before we move forward? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Drew. Next on our agenda is uh, our village attorney's report. No report tonight. Thank you. Followed by my report, but it would be a non-report for tonight as well. Um, next on our agenda is our consent agenda. Um, and tonight we have item 10, that is acceptance of a correspondence. Item 11, that is a second reading of an ordinance granting variations to construct a detached garage in a required front yard setback at 665 Maple Avenue. Item 12, a resolution authorizing an Illinois Transportation Enhancement Program grant application for the Central Business District Block 1 streetscape improvement project. And last, item 13, a resolution authorizing an Illinois Transport Enhancement Program grant application for pedestrian safety improvements on Green Bay Road. Uh, is there a request to remove any of these items from the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Uh, there is no request to remove any oh, of these items. Oh, I thought you were asking. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. I, I, <laughs> you need to these it's, it's rare that we get Drew to laugh at that moment. <laughs> Steve and I have. <laughs> I am following the steps that are prescribed for that, okay? So no request to remove any of these items. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. <laughs> um, thank you. Is there any discussion on these items? Hearing none, uh, Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Hatch. Aye. Trustee Rappin. Aye. Trustee Ryder. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. Trustee Freed. Aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Uh, next on other business, the item, our next item is item 14, a resolution approving a first amendment to the power supply agreement with MC Squared Energy Services for the Village Electricity Aggregation Program. Is there a motion to approve this resolution, please? So moved. Second. Thank you. Um, The village has been a member of the North Shore Electricity Aggregation Consortium since 2012 with the purpose of facilitating joint action and intergovernmental cooperation concerning the electricity aggre uh, aggregation program. In 2021, the, uh, the NCAC, so the North Shore Electricity Aggregation Consortium members, sought proposals for a new electricity supply contract through a competitive bidding process and commenced a three-year program term expi expiring October 2024. To continue the electricity aggregation program without interruption, the NCAC members must approve a contract amendment to the current power supply agreement with MC Squared Energy Services. The Village Board may recall that the current electricity aggregation program offers eligible residential and business customers a COMED price match for electricity supply. As a result, the village receives a civic contribution to at the end of each year to support sustainable programming in the village. To date, the village has received $60,000 and this one year extension will provide an additional contribution of $20,000. Residents, that are included in the MC Squared Energy Services Opt-Out Electricity Aggregation Program will still be COMED customers and will pay in the same manner they do today and will pay the same electric rate as the monthly COMED published tariff rate. We'll continue to contact COMED in the event of the power outage and will incur no enrollment or early termination, termination fees. Residents are not required to do anything to participate in this program, and all residents will pay the same rate each month, regardless of whether or not they are in the opt-out program. Staff is recommending approval of a one-year extension to the power supply agreement with MC Squared to continue the village electricity aggregation program without interruption. 
It is anticipated that the NCS, NCEAC will seek proposals during the next 12 months to determine possible next steps. Are there any questions on the board? Do, do, we, we got a motion for this item, correct? Yes. Okay. So it is a, um, it's a roll call. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Rappin? Aye. Trustee Ryder? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. Trustee Freed? Aye. Trustee Hatch? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you so much. Next item is item 15, a resolution authorizing the purchase of a new cardiac monitor and defibrillator. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Uh, the village fiscal year 2526 biennial fire department budget includes $60,000 for the purchase of a Zoll cardiac monitor defibrillator used on advanced life support rescue calls. Acquiring this device will allow the department to provide care to multiple patients on the call for multiple calls for service at one time. It is the same make and model, model as currently utilized by the village, Lake Forest Fire Department, and Northwestern Medicine Lake Forest Hospitals, ensuring backup, redundancy, and interoperability. On July 7, 2024, Chief Graff was notified that the department's grant application submitted under the Grant Programs Directorate Fiscal Year 2023 Assistance to Firefighters grant was approved for award in the amount of $47,619.04, resulting, resulting in a village share of $4,371.59 to achieve a total cost of a new device at $51,990.63. If approved, the attached resolution will authorize the purchase of a new sole monitor defibrillator through the NPPGov National Cooperative Procurement Organization. And tonight we have uh, Chief Graf with us and John uh, Ramsey present here for questions. Thank you. Um, I know the board knows John and for those watching, uh, I'd like to introduce John Crumsey. He's assistant chief of the department and he is the chief medical officer responsible for our EMS operations. Um, he'll speak to you about uh, the monitor and the need and so forth, John. Thank you. Thank you, Village Board, for your ongoing support and partnership. Um, with this purchase, we will complete a five-year process that we have gone through to certify and outfit two advanced life support EMS rigs. Um, so it's been it's a great addition to the department. It's going to, as the President said, is going to allow us to respond to multiple call, calls at one time, as, as well as take care of multiple patients at a single call. This new monitor also provides incredible feedback to our providers to help with resuscitation, not only cardiac related, but also respiratory related. So, you know if you guys have any questions. Okay. Thank I you. For I got trained on these machines for, I did the wilderness first aid uh, mm -hmm. type because we had to do that for Boy Scouts for when we take long, long trips in the middle of nowhere. This machine saves lives. Absolutely. And I'm happy you are getting prime equipment for our village, so thank you. Thank you. Appreciate and, it. And thank you for uh, submitting for the grant and receiving the grant. That's appreciated. Thank you very much. Fire department, were you guys batting a thousand with the assistance to fire and fire this <laughs> grant? <laughs> yeah. I don't think you've ever been told no. Uh, actually, this work. grant we were rejected one time, but we were persistent. <laughs> <laughs> Send in the muscle. <laughs> Got it. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great federal program for us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. It is going to be a roll call. Um, clerk, please call the roll, or do we have a question? Are we good? Um, clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Ryder? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. Trustee Freed? Aye. Trustee Hatch? Aye. Trustee Rappin? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Next item is item 16, an ordinance amending the Lake Bluff Municipal Code regarding no parking areas on Simpson Avenues. Uh, is there a motion to approve this ordinance? Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Um, 
village staff was recently contacted by a resident on Sims of Simpson Avenue between East Prospect and East Center Avenues regarding parking practices and the lack of regulation on their block. After speaking with three out of the four property owners on this block and hearing the nature of their concerns, the attached ordinance was drafted to prohibit parking on the southern west half of this block. Uh, Simpson Avenue is remarkably narrow in this block, approximately, approximately 18 feet in width, with current villages minimum road width being uh, 20, 23 feet with no parking allowed, and presently vehicles are permitted to park on both sides of the street. Consequently, vehicles exiting driveways on this block of Simpson Avenues have difficulty safely maneuvering around parked vehicles, which, looking at the increase in non-resident beach use, an observation by the Lake Bluff Police Department have increased over the last few years. The new parking restriction, similar to the parking limitations on the block of Simpson Avenue, just to the north, between East Center Avenue and East Scranton Avenue, enacted in November 2022, will be added to the police department's ongoing parking enforcement occurring in the areas in close proximity to, to Sunrise Beach. I took a ride, uh, a Vespa ride this weekend, move, uh, going around at prime time for people racing on the beach, uh, sun, uh, sunfish, people being going to the beach, people being on the bluff. It's it's narrow, even on a, even on a Vespa. There, this is <laughs> so I think we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. How many spaces do you think we're talking about, Drew? That will be in terms of that would be obstructed, taken out of service. Yeah, Jeff, what was it like three? Mm -hmm. I fully support this. Can we do better? Can we, because it's very narrow. I, I think it meets the need of the residents on the block without eliminating more parking, which is necessary for the beach. At the same time, the concern was they can't get in out of the driveways and totally. this, they were happy with this outcome, so. Okay. Any more questions on the board? It is a voice vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. That is first reading. You'll see it again. The signs aren't here yet, so mm -hmm. <laughs> They're, they've been ordered. So, cool. Next item is item 17, an ordinance amending Title Three of the Municipal Code regarding pillars and solicitors as a fee waiver policy. Uh, is there a motion for this ordinance? Motion of to approve. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, as you may recall, the Village Board at, at its November 8, 2021 meeting approved resolution number 21-2021-61 that established a policy for the waive, waiver of building and development fees for certain government agencies and non-for-profit to increase efficiency. Village staff is now recommending the board adopt a similar policy to enable village administrators to grant a fee waiver for nonprofits and charitable or religious organizations when applying for solicitation permits. The fee for solicitors permit is presently set at $100 and the license is good for 12 months. The attached ordinance creates a new administrative process that is consistent with existing village policies. I, I will acknowledge in the uh, section two of the ordinance there are two typos. Typos wave is uh, written as if it was on the ocean, as opposed with an I, and then there's an extra extraneous period after solicitors. But we can clean that up. Cool. <clears throat> Thank you. Any comments? Any reaction? No. Nope. Should we allow the Girl, girl Scout to? <laughs> I think we want to do that. <laughs> Thank you. It is a, a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you, and the motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item is an ordinance amending the Lake Bluff Municipal Code regarding alarm systems. Um, uh, is there a motion to approve this ordinance? So moved. Seconded. Thank you. 
Um, the village of Lake Bluff is a home rule municipality in accordance with Article 7, Section 6 of the Constitution of the State of Illinois of 19, 1970 and has the authority to regulate the installation, maintenance, response to, and fines and fees associated with alarm systems. Title 5 of the Lake Bluff Municipal Code sets forth regulation relating to public safety, with Chapter 6 of this title sets setting forth regulations pertaining specifically to alarm systems. After an extensive review by the village's public safety managers and the village attorney, the determination was made that the current ordinances did not reflect the best practices for responding to and maintaining alarms within the village services or service areas and the attached ordinance provides the necessary updates and clarifications. And we have our police chief and our fire chief joining us tonight. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. It's an alarming conversation. <laughs> you know what? I really appreciate it is no longer illegal to replace a wireless smoke detector in single family residences without obtaining a building permit. Steps forward, right? Steps yep. forward. <laughs> um, so we want to see if there's any questions. I know we have a couple revisions in here uh, that we're kind of still working through. Um, I know there's a few questions here or there, maybe. Hopefully, we can get those uh, answered for you tonight. So, so really high level. So, right now, you can have an alarm in your house that could be not monitored at all, which happens a lot. People have honors, you know, they don't hire a service to monitor them. Um, what we do know that we have about 50 commercial alarms that are being monitored and about 230 residential alarms being monitored. So that's the neighborhood of commercial and residential alarms that we're dealing with. Again, you could have an alarm system that's not monitored or you can choose to monitor it on your own with your phone. There's different ways to do it. But what this is, the goal of this update is to in a perfect world people will get alarms and get a permit so we know about it can process it mm -hmm. uh, and then we're, we're looking for annual updates um, which is with a small administrative fee not to generate revenue but our goal is to have the most up-to-date information in our system so um, people have life changes there are other information and then time passes and we don't have good alarm information and that's not good when we're trying to provide public safety services mm -hmm. So our alarm, the payment fees that are in here are too far off the norm. I think with like Evanston was 50 bucks. Yeah, there was something that's between 100 for initial and they got in like 30 yeah. and 15, 10, they were all in the middle. But so. the villages, the fee, we were on the low side, $25 in annual renewal re, you know, registration. Um, and um, there's some also some fees in there set up for multiple alarms. And the way this works, I, I was speaking uh, earlier today um, with someone about, um, I'll call them, a lot of the times these are driven by frequent flyers. We have somebody who may have um, multiple alarm calls at one property for false alarm because they have either equipment failures or there are operational issues that they're not changing. And so we try to have a, put together a uh, graduated scale that gets their attention. And our goal is trying, we're not trying to find people. We've historically been really soft in that approach. David, I don't know if you want to talk about that, but the, the goal is to try to get the, the uh, either the equipment or the operational changes so we're not coming back and wasting our resources on false alarms, which are pretty frequent. And, you know, there's a lot of resources that are deployed, this high-risk situation, and if we can avoid those, we want to avoid those. Tell me what I missed. Get it. Looks good. Sounds good. I have just two things on the alarms and notifications. From uh, the fire department standpoint, it's more a case of getting somebody's attention if we have to at that stage so we can get it fixed and it works well for them and it works well for the village. Part of why we're, the two of us standing here, the fire and the police department were treating some of these things differently and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say Matt initiated this. Let's try and put the two of our uh, ordinances in um, the whole process together and so forth. And this does a nice job uh, with that. And if I could address that really quick, it's a rolling 12 months is what we're trying to go to versus a calendar year. So what we're really trying to do with that is uh, for those locations that really don't always seem to come into compliance, that this is sort of like that extra little, hey, you're not getting this, uh, you know, like a restarter every year and you get a couple of false alarms before we go out there. It's kind of defeating the purpose, right? So all of a sudden you get, you know, four or five free alarms again and it's like it's starting that over again. Mm -hmm. We're really trying to solve that problem and we're hoping that this will help through that. 
one other one other the element of the updates, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, David and Matt, is that when the village outsourced our um, public safety dispatch from we used to do it here, then we outsourced to Glenview. When we did that, at, when we had it here in, in house, we were monitoring certain alarm systems. And so the language reflected that, and that's not really happening. I mean, most, I think, and we couldn't actually, we were trying to come up with other scenarios where there was, um, where the village still monitored an alarm, we couldn't come up with one. So there is language in this ordinance which still allow for that. Um, I think we, we talked about internally maybe debating when we bring this back for second reading whether they still have that in there to have flexibility or not. But nonetheless, right now we don't have that scenario. And again, even like the villagers' alarms, we're not monitoring those. Those are third party companies that we go into a contract for. So which is standard these days. Correct. Thank you. I'll ask one question. So this is for monitored alarms only, right? And is everybody who has a monitored alarm aware that they need to register with the village? I don't know if everyone is, no one, not everyone does apparently, because sometimes we'll have, what will happen I just wonder is, if there needs to be awareness. Yeah. So and tell then, them the plan, Matt. No, so that's part of it too, is the rule out, right? Oh. To, to yeah. do more of that, you know, public information saying, hey, you know, it's, it's not a huge fee. We're really trying to do this for your own benefit, right? So that when we do go out there, we actually are, we have information, right? If we see something's wrong, like let's say we do respond to a burglar alarm and it's an actual true alarm, mm -hmm. or in case a true fire alarm, that we're able to start somewhere, right? Have some information and start that process if the person is not on location. But there, there is an education campaign to communicate to our users in our area that yes, for those uh, 280 or so that we know about, we'll get a letter saying, hey, welcome, this is a new program, please, here's how you do it. And then we'll put out general information, the newsletter, the e-news, and when we do on-site visits, and we'll, you know, it'll be an ongoing program. Could you just add it to another bill that goes to them from the village? Can we do it on the utility bill? I think that's possible. Yeah, the big part of it though is the actual registration form. Mm -hmm. So that form is what is what's big for us, right? That's what helps both the police and the Contact fire. I mean, yeah. 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 That, that form has multiple cell phones, has do you have a dog? Or what kind of dog do you have? Right. Uh, people you can join, people outside your home you can join uh, in case of an event. So no, it's a really good informational tool for you. So for a $25 fee, I don't consider that as a, a, deter a deterrent, but for you, I believe this is an essential tool. And we're able to put that into the New World uh, CAD operating system, mm -hmm. and it kind of gets registered into the alarm system so that we actually have that you know, as an ongoing record. So that when police officers or other public safety personnel pull up to, to a site, that information is available. Right. Yeah. No, I think this is really good. Is there a duty to update that information? So that's the yearly? That, so every so year? Can, okay. Correct, correct. And, or, and or if there's any changes, like if, we don't charge again if someone comes back and says, hey, I need to change you know, some of my information or whatever. We totally understand that, and we're able to update that whenever if need be. Right. So. Okay. Cool. Any more questions on the board? Thank you. Matt and Dave, thank you very much. Sure, tell them about Matt. First reading gloves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anything yeah. else, David? Maybe, the, maybe there is one other point to, to make known here. As, as said a minute ago, we're trying to make sure police and fire are operating the same in communication. There is one difference, so that you'd be aware of it. It's in the fire code. You're familiar with the no so-called Knox boxes. You see them on the buildings for key access. Um, just so you'll know, the village code in the fire section calls out specifically if they do have an alarm, fire alarm in their building and so forth, they're also required to have a Knox box in the Knox box. Uh, key information and modification and all that is also covered by what Matt's doing, but that's also in addition to what we're doing here. Yeah, okay. right. And for example, we're doing a program right now that Assistant Chief uh, Marsh is running uh, where we're going around to all of our commercial and industrial locations that have those Knox boxes. We're servicing, lubricating, taking the keys out, make sure they work and so forth when and why we're at each one of those locations. Greg has the firemen giving them forums, information on it, and we're also giving them a forum that's asking us to give us the latest key holder and contact information so we can update that for the police and fire. So that's an ongoing program that uh, Greg has running also right now to try and make all of this work. The idea is uh, communication beforehand and you know, if we go someplace and they don't have an alarm, we say, hey, you, you really ought to register up and that kind of stuff. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for your service and thank you for what you do for our community.
it is going to be a uh, voice vote. If there are no more, uh, any, any more questions on the board, mm -hmm. it's a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Next is our trustees report. Uh, do trustees uh, wish to make a report tonight? No, thank you. Uh, and last uh, would be the consideration of a July 22nd, 2024 executive session meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve uh, meeting minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Are there any questions? Are there any concerns on these minutes? Hearing mm -hmm. none, a clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Cole? Aye. Trustee Freed? Aye. Trustee Hatch? Aye. Trustee Rappin? Aye. Trustee Ryder? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, and last, uh, last, we have tonight an executive session. Um, and I will be specific. Uh, may I have a motion to go into closed session for the purpose of discussing personal matters uh, pursuant to the Illinois Open Meeting Act, Act, and that upon the adjournment of a closed session, this regular meeting will be deemed to automatically be adjourned by the same vote without the conduct of any further business. A motion to go in session? Motion. Second. Thank you. This is a roll call. Clerk? Trustee Freed? Aye. Trustee Hatch? Aye. Trustee Rappin? Aye. Trustee Ryder? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. Thank you. And this concludes the open part of the Village Board meeting. Thank you for anyone in attendance with us tonight. Good night. Recording stopped.